Hey, what's up, nerds? Uh, it has been a couple of weeks, and I am really sorry about that. I have no excuse other than I took a little mini vacation, and by the time I got back, I was so just tired. I could have recorded an episode, but I just did not feel like it, and I didn't want to produce a half-assed attempt. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We're back. It's a brand new episode of Anime Streaming Showcase. And this week we're going to look at a little bit of an older series that's still from the aughts and we're going to look at Studio Trigger's Kill la Kill. Studio Trigger has created a rather unique following in the anime fandom as a studio that likes to take risks and usually go against the grain. They're still a newer studio, but they have found success with series like Inferno Cop and the current Little Witch Academia and today's showcase Kill la Kill. It's a show of fashion, action, friendship, betrayal, and absolutely insane battles that aren't wholly stylistic, they contain considerable substance too. Kill a Kill is set in a fictional area of Japan, and the protagonist Ryuko Matoi is a new transfer student at Hanoji Academy. Ryuko immediately becomes friends and roommates of Mako, who helps fill her in on the academy and the surrounding slums and expectations of Hono'o City. Mako explains that Hono'o City is a very trickle-down society and it all is dependent upon your success and is dependent upon your Goku uniform. It's ranked by stars and the more stars you have, the higher pedigree and lifestyle you're treated to, thus resulting in an easier, more fruitful life. Unfortunately, it's never that easy as Honooji Academy president Satsuki Kirin dominates everything around her and ensures a strong checks and balances systems in place for Honoo City. Satsuki and her Elite Four, the three star Goku uniform cabinet, rely on resolve and strength to remain in charge and keeping their way of life as the norm. Now, obviously, Ryoko is the best antithesis of Satsuki's worldview and she's been hunting Satsuki for years to learn the secrets of her father's death. Armed with a half-scissor shaped longsword, she's embarrassing trampled all too easily by Satsuki, Ryuko stumbles upon Senketsu, a special sailor uniform that grants her the ability to stand up to Satsuki and the Elite Four's regime. What unfolds next is a foray into a fashionista feud that's a fabulously flashy affair, and Kill a Kill's world revolves around the Life Fivers, and every Goku uniform is rife with them and can create astounding abilities and powers for the wielder, and the same can be said for Senketsu, so Ryuku's never too far behind in the competitive department. She's fully capable of withstanding everything, from one-on-one -on -one fights, to battle royales, to obstacle courses, and anything in between. Ryuku's a well-rounded heroine who's never afraid to admit defeat, and she does lose, and she has little shame in running away. She knows when she can be beaten, and she knows when it's best to sometimes surrender. It's a rare sight to see something in anime like this today, but it's always a pleasant distinction to see in a genre that's predominantly macho men beating the hell out of one another and winning on pride and sheer power or willpower. A lot of Kill a Kill's other strengths come in its story and its presentation since Studio Trigger have a pedigree of talents within their studio. A number of members are former Gainax associates who have worked on massive projects like Neon Genesis Evangelion, Gurren Lagann, or the ever popular Furikuri, just to name a couple. Trigger has this power with them to not only showcase amazing animation and stories, but highlight unusual, atypical characters into their plots. Uh, the full cast of Kill a Kill is certainly not free from being cast as very archetypes or caricatures we've seen hundreds of times before, but there are a fair number that aim to shake off the monotony a show like this could have been in less capable hands, in a lesser studio's hands. Considering that this was Trigger's very first big budget TV production in terms of links and being a full-fledged series, a lot could have went wrong and ultimately destroyed the company, but everything in Kill the Kill ran smooth and helped create a memorable series for a bulk of the episodes. Director Hiroyuki Imayashi and his team created a very visual tapestry in Kill the Kill that hits a variety of styles that, despite following an arguably simplistic setup, is presented in a manner that's full of life and beauty. Colors pop and contrast in nearly every scene. The detail of individuals in the background, even subtle moments of defeat, are bathed in an almost sepia tone wash that dilutes Ryuko and emphasizes hopelessness when she's down and beaten. 
the pacing of Kill la Kill is a complete binging effort is quite remarkable, especially from someone who watched it on a week-to-week -week basis as it aired initially and felt the pangs of a new preview just haunting me for the next week. Kill la Kill is an easy show to simply just put on and kick back and relax to, but it's also a fun study for those who like to find the finer points and the finer details of what the anime industry can do with often tired tropes and, and cliched moments. Rounding out a tremendous animation production, we have of course the amazing Hiroyuki Sawano providing the soundtrack, and it's easily one of my personal favorites that he's ever created. Songs are bombastic, and, and themes are thematic and, and very particular to certain characters. Certain characters often are treated with some of the finest songs I've ever heard in an anime or probably any show ever. Satsuki's mother's ragyo theme, in particular Blumenkrantz, is somehow a creepy yet epic and intimidating cre creation. It's still a tune to this day that I find myself humming or, or very poorly singing the German lyrics aloud to myself. Sawano's created an incredible discography for himself, and Kill la Kill is a very worthy addition to it. Now, Kill la Kill is a show that contains more fan service than some people might enjoy or prefer, but it's simply pivotal to the plot. Some bits are certainly more egregious than others, and it's not my cup of tea, but between Ryuko and the Nudist Beast characters, there's kind of some fan service for just about everyone by the end of the show. Uh, the plot runs smoothly throughout the 24 episodes, and while I personally felt it gets a little bit stretched out in the later half, it's still so over the top that it's hard to not at least be entertained by the action. Kill la Kill is an almost instantly accessible anime via Crunchyroll, uh, Netflix also streams the series, and Hulu even has it up there, so there's nary a place you can't find it. And it did air a couple of years ago on Toonami, so there is an English dub out there, but neither Crunchyroll, Netflix, or Hulu contain it, they only have the subversion. Kill la Kill is a show that's fun to look back every few years to see if it has its lasting power, and as someone who watched it when it initially aired, and to someone who just watched it, even after only a few years of its release, I still think it's a remarkable show. The fan service is a little bit over the top from every now and again, and there are just some moments that are like, oh brother, you saw that coming? But in the sense of what Kill a Kill is, and it's just a sheer action show, there's never a dull moment, and it's always pushing to its finale, and there's enough little tweaks and, and turns in there to freshen it up, even if it does seem a little bit tad predictable. So Kill a Kill is absolutely a recommendable show. I think there's a lot for tons of people to find and enjoy. Uh, the soundtrack is definitely a standout and some of Sawano's best pre-Attack uh, on Titan. Uh, the animation is, is absolutely top-notch. Uh, Studio Trigger, whomever they have in their animation department and their directing is amazing and, and it, it really has carried over to other shows they've done, especially Little Witch Academia, the both OVAs which are on Netflix, I believe. Uh, if not, they're definitely probably on Crunchyroll. I need to look into that. But those two shorts are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I have not had a chance to check out the TV series that's airing uh, currently, but I imagine when Netflix, whom has the rights to it, when they inevitably put it up probably by the end of this year or summer, I will, I will have checked it out by then. Uh, there it is! Uh, our latest episode of Anime Streaming Showcase. I'm so happy to be back. I'm so happy to be doing this again. I hated taking two weeks off. I hate missing schedules. I hate not producing things. As always, uh, thank you very much to the Laser Time Podcast Network for allowing me to put my ass upon their website. They have no obligation to do it. They are just allowing me another avenue uh, thanks so much always for the comments, the likes, the subscribes, and, and everything that you people are, are putting out there to say, hey, you're doing a good job, or this needs tweaking, and it's, it's so good. And I want to give a shout out to my buddy, Mr. Matthew J, who does Cartoons 101 on his YouTube channel. I will link it below uh, and in the description and in, and in, and in the laser time. Uh, feed and, and all that fun stuff so so please check him out he is doing great things and he in May has a, a month of anime that he's going to be dedicating his channel to so be sure to check him out and, and subscribe and like all of his stuff he is 
putting me to shame. I do this on a zero budget. He probably has a five dollar budget, and he is doing wonders with that five dollar budget. So, uh, shout out to him, Matt. You are fantastic, and please keep doing what you're doing. It, it gives me a reason to compete with, with your amazing abilities, which I cannot. So, but uh, keep watching. I love you guys so much, and we'll see you next time on Anime Streaming Showcase, and you can watch more of my ass.